Hey guys, Dr. Dobson here, and this video is gonna be a four canal endo. Here's the tooth uh, you can see on the x-ray. It had a deep amalgam filling, and it also had a crack. There's the uh, radiolucency indicating the abscess. So we're gonna get going. Anytime I'm doing a crown and an endo together, I'll take a couple millimeters off the occlusal surface just to get us that much closer to the orifice. So we're just gonna use a KS1 to remove, do our occlusal reduction. And then if we try to put a rubber dam on right now, it's gonna shred, so I'll actually open up the interproximal contacts. And then we'll be good to get a rubber dam on. Sometimes I'll do the uh, orifice discovery with the rubber dam off, but this one, the access is pretty clear. There's an X-ray, you can see the crack there. This is a case where I told the patient that if I didn't like the look of the pulpal floor, then uh, we would extract the tooth. But we ended up proceeding with root canal. Um, because once we had it opened, I was comfortable with the kind of presentation of the tooth. I've done uh, done root canal in similar cases and had good results that I'll, I can post some photos of that one. <clears throat> so we're going to do our, um, our access prep uh, until we're at the pulpal floor, and then we'll just open it up according to the anatomy. And then we'll go in with a month's discovery burr. These things are great. And we can see, you can see pretty clearly that there's going to be four canals just based on the pulpal floor. So we'll take our endo explorer and poke around until we get a stick in, in all four areas. The canals are somewhat calcified, but not too, too bad. There's a photo of the access prep and the four orifices. So we're, we're gonna start uh, instrumenting the canals with a size six file to get it down to the, uh, to the apex of the tooth as indicated by the red line on the root ZX2 apex locator. And I personally just use a corkscrewing motion clockwise all the way down. The file does all the work. I don't typically don't end up with perforations or file separations, even if I'm you know, a clockwise the whole way down. And then we'll use a glide path file to open it up a little bit more. You're getting with full strength hypo. And then I think there's probably a few millimeters left of negotiation until the uh, hand file reaches the apex. And it'll bark a red line at us, so we'll finish taking our glide path file to length <clears throat> and I find once you get the glide path file to length to the red line on the apex locator then the rest of the endo is pretty straightforward so we'll do the same thing for the mesials here irrigate with full strength hypo so yeah screwing down the hand file and I'll usually use a a few hand files and a couple of uh, glide path files, especially for a four canal tooth. So we'll take our new glide path file down to length on the mesials. And then we can begin opening up the uh, orifices. This is a SX shaping file. And I think that my settings are 3.5 newton, cent uh, newton centimeter, whatever it is, um, torque and 350 RPM, something around there. You can use the orifice opener once you've, before you use the glide path file, but in calcified cases, I'll typically use it after. And then we'll go in with our uh, shaping files. I think we skipped the 1504. This is a 2506. So this will actually be the last file. The This will be our last one to finish the prep. You may have went to a 3506 or 3504, but I don't think it's included. And then we're gonna use our endo activator to sterilize the canals all the way down to the apex. Necrotic cases I find super important to get every file to the apex and then um, get a little puff out the end to ensure that the bone will heal back up around the root tips. There's a photo of the prepared prepared uh, tooth and we're going to 
we are going to take a working length um, radiograph in this case. I don't always take a working length radiograph, but we're happy with the length there. So we'll remove the GP cones, do one last little endo activation with full strength hypochlorite, and then we'll dry. So once the canals are dry, we're going to fill them up with our um, bioceramic, flowable bioceramic sealer. And we'll take the tip as far down as we can get it and start filling it up. And then once they're filled all the way up to the orifice as low down as the tip will go, we'll start uh, putting our GP cones in and I'll, I'll kind of tamp it up and down to ensure that the uh, sealer goes all the way down to the apex and ideally a little bit out and the same thing for the distals pumping it up and down a couple times and then seeing it to length and then the root canal is finished so we'll clean up the excess gp snip off the tips and then sear away the excess with a heated plugger and then and then that's <clears throat> That's pretty much it. Going to remove a little bit of the excess GP just to make it look nice and pretty. And then we'll bond a core. And Equia Forte is indicated for use as a core and it works great as one in my experience. So that's what we're going to use. Five second phosphoric acid etch and rinse and then mostly dry it and then apply the Equia Forte material. And it's a time set so we wait four minutes and then we'll come back and disassemble the rubber dam, removing the liquid dam. There's the final. We're happy with the little bit of extrusion out the apexes. And then we're going to do a crown prep. We would have taken a preliminary at the beginning of the appointment, but I don't think that was captured on the footage. So just going to do a standard crown prep with a KS1. I'm going to leave the buckle margin a uh, half millimeter super gingival and then everything else is going to be equal gingival. And you can see that distal part, the crack doesn't really go through the distal enamel or the mesial. So we gave the tooth a pretty good prognosis and it's, it's still in the mouth. I've followed up on this. This was probably about six months ago doing well asymptomatic. I'm going to pack a size one cord around from the mesial buckle to the distal buckle until we have clear visual access to all of our margins. Refine a little bit more. You don't have to have the water on. And then we're ready to take a scan. So we're going to dry, rinse and dry. Take a scan of the prep, take a scan of the opposing, take a bite scan. We'll show the scan later on, but we'll make a temporary. Going to use the template there and then seat the tray that we took before. Give it a minute, flick it off with a spoon, remove the cord and the excess temp material, and then adjust the margins of the temporary with a wheel and then I'm going to take a millimeter of um, material off the occlusal surface right off the bat because we don't want the temp and occlusion. And then we'll mark with the bite paper and then take down any blue spots. And I'm going to show the um, some of the manufacturing of the uh, crown since I make these in office. I'll, I'll send the scan to my designer. Um, here's the scan. So I just send the the files to him and then he sends me back the design within a couple of days and then I'll just put it in the mill. If I need something immediately then we can make it for next day but I typically just do next week. There's the green state crown after it comes out the milling machine and then there's the sintered product, sintered and polished. I have a Roland 52D dry mill 5 axis that I really like. And then we'll get the patient back the next week, flick the temporary off with a spoon, clean up the excess temp cement, do a dry fit, check with the bite, make sure that it feels comfortable, 
which it did. Didn't have to make any adjustments. Check the interproximal contacts. We're happy. And then we'll remove the crown and treat the intaglio and pumice the prep. And then a thorough rinse and dry and then Jackie's going to load up the crown and we're going to seat it down with uh, Panavia SA self-adhesive. And once we clean up the temp cement, then the patient's gonna be good to go and this tooth will be back in service.